Hi guys, welcome back to another week. I'm Robsta. Um, I have an exciting project this week. It's a commission for a friend of mine that uh, we actually met a long time ago online playing Call of Duty. Uh, Mac has reached out to me and wants to get a custom Carhartt Demon Slayer. He wants to get some sort of jacket um, painted with some Demon Slayer characters on it, which is like the most exciting thing to me. I've been wanting to paint some custom uh, Demon Slayer characters onto something. I have some jackets that I was thinking about putting it on for myself. Um, but when he mentioned the Carhartt and stuff, I thought those really cool canvas jackets would be a really cool thing for me to try painting on as opposed to it's it's similar enough to Jean, but I think that light tan brown would look really cool with some detailed characters and some like hard black outlines so anyways i'm really excited i'm going to pick up the jacket for him right now i'm gonna go purchase one uh he is in the states so just to save us shipping back and forth with like a jacket that he wants and me painting it and shipping it back to save us some money and time i'm just gonna pick up the jacket now and then i will see you back in the studio let's do it So the jacket was secured. Um, really happy with this dark brown color for the design that we have planned. I think it's going to look really cool and really make the design pop, but also complement it at the same time. This is the design that I came up with. It's kind of uh, really close to the style of show, but a little bit of a lean into my own style. I love the colors of this. Like, I'm really excited to put this on. The only thing that was worrying me was I did this really cool like sticker outline um, that has no outline to it. The blues and greens are on the outside. Uh, and usually when painting on fabrics, I the outline really helps make things look crisp uh, since sometimes it's hard to make that crisp look on the paint. And then here's how I sampled it on the jacket to see what size I wanted it. And then of course I printed it out and taped together this stencil in the exact size that I want so that I can place everything exactly where I want it on the jacket, how I designed it, and not have to think about designing it a second time. So I'm going to use this white Posca marker. I'm going to go in with the jacket. Um, it was a little bit wrinkly. I tried to iron it a bit. I know it'll flatten out as I go, but I needed it to be somewhat flat to get the stencil on accurately. I, especially with hooded items, like when I'm designing sweaters, I try to uh, pay attention to where the hood's going to land so it's not covering too much important details of the jacket, or the design, sorry. So I'm just testing it out with the hood. I don't mind if it lays a bit over top of it. I like that they interact with each other, but I don't want it to cover anything super important, like the entirety of the tops of the swords, and then you can't see that they're there. So once I got my placement, I taped it down. And then I find it really easy to go around with a white Posca marker. It's not super saturated. It always kind of sinks in and uh, fades away. But it's enough that you can see where it is. But if you were to make a mistake, it's not going to uh, sit too solid on the jacket in that spot. And here's the final look of the stencil. It's so easy to see on this dark jacket with the white Posca marker. And it'll make it really easy to fill in. So now I go in with a um, acrylic medium heat set. I mix that in with my white. I always start with a white base, especially when I'm painting on something that has a different color, like this brown. So I'm kind of neutraling that out so that I don't have to use a lot of the colors that I mix because it'll kind of soak it in and pull it away and then I'll have to do tons of layers of it, especially to make that color pop. So it's really easy to start with the white. And when I mix it in with the acrylic, uh, heat medium. I don't have to remember to mix that heat medium in with every color that I do and it won't affect them. Um, then I can go in with an iron after and heat set this into the fabric. But this is probably the longest process and the least exciting to watch so let's just see it after we're done. And so here it is. It is fully set in the white. It also helps with a bit of the wrinkles and stuff. It flattens it out for the details that we're going to go in with. So I've continued with the same stencil. I've cut away the border so that I can stencil this on and know where the border is going to go. 
Um, and then I just continued to do this throughout, cutting out different pieces of the stencil and using it to trace new spots. And now that I have that white paint on the background, it's got some texture and I can uh, stencil with a pencil from now on. And now for the fun part, we get to go in with some colors. how great this gradient turned out. I'm so pleased with how this compared to how I drew it on the iPad, so I think it's going to be really cool. Let's continue on with some more colors. We're just going to do sketch out some of the details, uh, like the edges of the ears, the eyes, the nose, and the horns, so that we don't have to overpaint too much. So we'll sketch out where they are so that we can avoid them going forward, um, and then fill them in when it needs to, and then we're not stenciling as much. These ones I wanted the placement of them to be really specific obviously to where they were on the face um, but then when I go in with like the purple um, fur lines I'm just going to do that by hand and kind of uh, use it as reference uh, since those won't affect the face as if the eyes were a little bit skewed it could make the face look wonky so those parts are really important to how I design them um, but these I can pretty much look at and then resketch. And now let's paint some big sections and really pull this piece together. I filled in some other sections like the sword handles and gave them that two-tone shaded color that I wanted and I filled in the swords as well. Uh, it was a little bit harder to film with the camera in my face so I just got those out of the way and now we're gonna go in and fill the pink of the nose, the purple lines, um, as well as the eyes and the kind of eyelids and horns. Um, the purple took a lot of time and patience since it doesn't have an outline again I needed to be really precise where it met the brown fur <laughs> and uh, yeah there's my wonky little guy I'm using as a reference for the colors let's do it mm -hmm. 
And now, for arguably the best part of this entire process, in my mind at least, is the line work. It really brings the entire thing together, it makes it look so crisp and clean, and you can see the final picture. Um, and then we get to go in with little details, like little um, black detail lines, as well as some little like white highlights, and it really makes the entire thing look exactly how it did when I drew it up on my iPad, which is super exciting. And now I'm just going to go in with the iron and heat set it. It really makes the whole thing soft and movable um, and should help it avoid too much wear and tear. I do insert a little care card from some research that I've done on how to take care of uh, painted on denim and canvas fabrics to make it last longer. But I think it turned out so well and here is the final result of it all. As I just did this this week, I started at the beginning of this week and uh, ended today and I'm editing to upload. 
Uh, the receiver in this jacket hasn't seen it yet, so this will be his first look at it as well, and then I'm going to ship it off to him after I uh, put my signature somewhere on it. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think he's going to think. I hope he'll let me know what he thinks when he sees this video. Um, and I'm super excited for more projects like this. I definitely have some Demon Slayer projects in mind. Uh, but let me know what you guys want to see for more projects this year. And yeah, thank you guys. Bye.